Right friends, welcome back to main events of 10th week. Let us look at the highlights. Cabinet approves Pradhan Mantri Ujjwal Yojana. The main purpose is to give gas connections or you can say LPG connections for cooking to 5 crore people in 3 years. Cabinet clears the new hydrocarbon exploration and licensing policy popularly known as HELP. Then new pricing policy for difficult to access gas fields. Cabinet clears amendments to MMDR Act. They became necessitated because uh, subsequent to the amendments made in 2015, mergers and acquisitions are not uh, taking place uh, because of certain clauses in Amendment Act. Then real estate uh, regulation and development bill 2015 cleared by the parliament and uh, it facilitates establishment of uh, real estate regulatory authorities uh, in various uh, states. That is one important point. Just like telecom regulatory authority, just like uh, IRDAI, just like uh, SEBI, real estate sector will have finally a regulator and if everything goes well, consumer will be the king in future. Then government uh, rolls back the proposal to tax 60% of the withdrawals in employees provident fund. Then parliament approves national waterways bill of 2015 because of which 106 additional waterways will be added to national waterways. At present there are only 5 by adding those 106 the total will go up to 111. Parliament passes the Bureau of Indian Standards bill 2015. Now finally the Bureau of Indian Standards has got statutory provision. Then Maharashtra, Telangana signed historic accord on sharing of river waters of Godavari and its tributaries. Then the Marshall Islands is uh, suing India, Pakistan and United Kingdom because these countries are not able to stop the proliferation of nuclear weapons. Then economic stimulus by European Central Bank. Whatever the steps European Central Bank is taking, growth is not taking place in Eurozone area. Then ISRO finally places the sixth satellite of IRNSS series into orbit. After one more satellite, we will have our own navigation system just like GPS. International Women's Day was celebrated on March 8th. We are going to discuss certain issues specific to India. Right friends, let us look at the first and the foremost event and important event. Finally, rural women are going to get LPG connections at subsidized prices. That means subsidized initial cost. Government rolled out a program. The name of the program is Pradhan Mantri Vujwala Yojana. And as per this program, during the next three years, 5 crore LPG connections will be given for below poverty line families. And I would like to tell you one point, India as a whole has got 24 crore families. Government estimated around 20 percent, that is around 5 crore families are below poverty line and government wants to give subsidized connection. That means government will contribute rupees 1600 per each connection as initial cost, rupees 1600 per each connection government will subsidize for getting LPG connection as initial cost and total 5 crore government wants to cover during the next 3 years and it will cost government rupees 8000 crores. So, rupees 8000 crore Pradhan Mandri Vujwala Yojana was cleared by the cabinet and 5 crore households in the next 3 years will get subsidy for getting initial LPG connection. And within next 3 years, hopefully, if this program goes well, almost 90 to 95 percent of total 24 crore households in the country will have LPG connection. And at present, LPG connections in the country are around 16 crores. 
out of 24 crore families at present lpg connections are around 15 to 16 crores and by the by in the budget of 2016-17 2000 crore was allotted for this program and government wants to cover 1.5 crore beneficiaries during 2016-17 and this pradhan mantri ujjwala yojana will be there for three financial years 2016-17 17-18 and 18-19 so by march 31st 2019 5 crore people in this country whoever are below poverty line will get this subsidized LPG connections. Right friends, look at the next important issue, cabinet clears new hydrocarbon exploration and licensing policy. This is known as HELP, that is nothing but hydrocarbon exploration and licensing policy. It is devised in place of a NELP. NELP is new exploration and licensing policy and from now onwards it will be hydrocarbon exploration and licensing policy. There are four major changes in comparison to new exploration and licensing policy. This HELP will have four major changes. First and the foremost is there will be uniform license for exploration and production for all forms of hydrocarbons. Whether it is for oil, gas, coal bed methane, shale oil, whatever the type of hydrocarbon, the license will be uniform. Second important point is open acreage policy. That means in the designated area, the exploration and production companies will be allowed to choose the specific blocks. The total designated area will be there. There, the production companies will be allowed to choose designated blocks. This is known as open acreage policy. Third important point is change in policy towards revenue sharing from profit sharing. Previously, the system was profit sharing. When the license is given for some company like Reliance Industries, maybe Cairn India, after giving the license, then government will get the share in the profits. That means initial costs are to be recovered. That means the company will spend something and after recovering that cost, balance profits will be shared with the government. There the biggest problem is there was no transparency. Always the dispute between government and the company. Company says, my initial cost is this much. Government will not agree. So, it led to several disputes. So, government changed the policy towards revenue sharing from the previous profit sharing. Previous profit sharing model was without transparency. And now revenue sharing model, that means whatever the revenue company will get, government will share something. That means government will get some share out of the revenue. Government is not bothered about their cost. So, this is the major change in this new policy that is known as HELP. Fourth important point is it will also provide marketing and pricing freedom for crude oil and natural gas produced. Now, sufficient freedom will be given for marketing the produce, whether it is oil or natural gas. Right friends, so these are the four major changes out of four. The first one is very important, that is a uniform license for all types of hydrocarbons. Third one is still more important, that is the shift towards revenue sharing from profit sharing. In the previous profit sharing method, there was no transparency. Companies claimed absorbent initial costs. That's why government is losing a lot of income. Now in revenue sharing, there will not be any hassle with regard to the initial costs and all. Whatever the company gets, government will get its due share as per the agreement. Right friends, after this, let us look at another important issue that is the new pricing policy for difficult to access gas fields. Union Cabinet also cleared new pricing policy for gas discoveries in difficult to access areas. In difficult areas like deep sea, like ultra deep sea. Normally, deep sea exploration is from around 
thousand feet depth of water to around five thousand feet. And as per some reports, these figures vary, but broadly, I am telling this one thousand feet to five thousand feet depth of oil exploration is deep sea. If the oil exploration is beyond five thousand feet, that means these are the explorations in sea. that is also known as offshore oil exploration in oil exploration there are two types primarily one is onshore the other one is offshore offshore means inside the sea inside the sea when the exploration is done between the water depths of around 1000 feet to 5000 feet that is a deep sea drilling and if the oil is explored beyond 5000 feet or 1500 meters depth of water then it is ultra deep sea these figures differ from report to report but broadly please understand when the exploration is done in sea beyond the depth of 1500 meters or 5000 feet that is known as ultra deep sea exploration so for the difficult areas like deep sea ultra deep sea high temperature areas high pressure areas the government has given the pricing freedom for the oil companies only government decided the ceiling price and the companies has got the freedom to sell their product and the ceiling price will be decided based on one year average of landing prices of fuel oil naphtha and imported coal this is with regard to the exploration of gas in difficult areas like deep sea ultra deep sea high temperature and high pressure areas look into the next one cabinet clears amendments to mmdr act what is mmdr act MMDR Act is Mines and Minerals Development and Regulation Act and for this act amendments were made in 2015 so it is popularly known as MMDR Amendment Act of 2015 which came into existence on 12th January 2015 as per that act all the mineral leases in this country are to be issued only after competitive bidding that means through auction process all the mines and the minerals are to be allotted only after competitive bidding that is as per mmdr amendment act of 2015 which came into force on january 12 2015 but the problem is prior to january 12 2015 several captive mines were allotted to several companies you may ask a pertinent question what is captive mine captive mine is the mining will be done only for use for that particular company that means if the captive mine is allotted to visakhapatnam steel plant then that particular iron ore is to be used only for the production by visakhapatnam steel plant not for commercial sale so prior to january 12 2015 several captive mines were allotted to some companies and because of the new legislation when companies mergers and acquisitions are taking place this is coming in the way of mergers and acquisitions so these captive mines which were there in existence prior to january 12 2015 can be transferred right the captive mines which are in existence prior to january 12 2015 can now be transferred as captive mines only right so with this mergers and acquisitions especially in cement industry may take place without any hassles right friends this is all about uh, this amendments to mmdr act next important issue most important issue real estate regulation and development bill 2015 passed by parliament the landmark achievements of the first session of this budget session or you can say first part of this budget session which concluded on march 16th is two bills one is aadhar bill was passed but there are some controversies and second one is this real estate regulation and development bill this is a long due 
and you may ask what is the need for this bill the need for this bill arises because of the reason if you look at telecom sector there is telecom regulator troy if you look at banking sector there is regulator reserve bank of india if you look at capital market there is a regulator sebi but real estate sector there is no regulator till date and it is the biggest anomaly in the country because real estate contributes to 9% of gdp in this country but there is no regulator now with the passage of this bill now states can have regulators for real estate and the salient features of this bill i have given first and the foremost is it covers both residential and commercial properties real estate regulatory authority can be set up in all the states in fact as per this act real estate regulatory authority is to be set up in all the states then developers are required to disclose all the project details including status of approvals they have to disclose all the project details they cannot start a project without disclosing the project details then construction to start only after getting all the statutory approvals builders to charge only based on carpet area and once the norms are disclosed if any changes are required to be done at least two third of the home buyers should agree and 70% of the funds collected should be kept in separate account popularly known as escrow account and this money can only be used for land and construction of building so real estate developers cannot divert the funds then appellate tribunals will be established to adjudicate cases and maximum time period is 60 days and these are applicable for all the apartments of 500 square meters area and above or eight apartments and above and if the authorities rules are violated there will be imprisonment of up to 3 years for developers and up to 1 year for agents strict rules and regulations are kept as per this real estate regulation and development bill of 2015 and let us wait and see how the states will react and if you look at the positives positives are real estate sector contributes 9% to gdp and so far real estate sector is working with a lot of secrecy transparency is not there responsibility is not there accountability is not there delay in execution is the norm and hopefully all these things will go away once this is implemented and overall customer will benefit and customer will become king no doubt but what are the concerns there are several concerns it all depends on seriousness of the state governments how many state governments will react and establish a real estate regulatory development authority with the serious concern that is the million dollar question second important point is real estate sector is synonymous with the black money there is a huge gap between the government rate and the market rate market rate two to three times higher than government rate there is lot of black money circulation how governments will stem this rot that is the biggest question because once 70% of the money is required to be deposited in escrow account and there is a gap between government rate and market rate what will happen to this black money whether government will take steps to bring the government rate and market rate at par so as to remove the anomaly of black money that is the million dollar question and another important aspect is municipal authorities have to follow strict rules and regulations because this real estate sector is predominantly in urban areas and municipal authorities or corporation authorities are not that efficient and corruption is the biggest problem with these authorities and these are the concerns for implementing this landmark act of real estate regulation and development which is long overdue in this country and let us hope some good things to come and state governments let us hope will implement this with the seriousness and concern then customer will be the king definitely government rolls back the proposal to tax 60% of the withdrawals in epf 
we have already deliberated this in detail in budget union budget 2016-17 please listen to it we deliberated in detail about employees provident fund and the national pension system in the budget the union minister announced to tax 60 percent of the withdrawals in employees provident fund and similar provision was kept for national pension system previously employees provident fund was entirely tax free and the national pension system previously fully taxed at withdrawals government wanted to correct that anomaly accordingly 60 percent of the money withdrawal was taxed in the budget but subsequently because of a pressure from several quarters the union finance minister has withdrawn this for employees a provident fund so at present after the rollback in the parliament now employees the provident fund will enjoy exempt 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 status and national pension system will enjoy exempt exempt and tax that means withdrawals 60 percent will be taxable and 40 percent tax free for national pension system if you want more about this please listen to union budget right friends parliament approves the national waterways bill 2015 this national waterways at present before the passage of this bill india has got only five national waterways and in this national waterways bill 2015 government added 106 inland waterways so with this addition total will become 111 Government wants to give more impetus for shipping and navigation and this inland waterways constitutes around 14,500 kilometers across the country and inland waterways authority of India will develop feasible stretches for shipping and navigation. Right? So, please do not forget 106 new national waterways are added. At present, there are only 5. Total will become 111. You may ask, what are the 5? Please look into this. These are the 5 inland waterways at present in existence in this country. The first one is Ganga Bhagiradi Hooghly River system. Second one is this Brahmaputra from Sadia to Dubri that is up to Bangladesh border. The third one is towards the west coast. The fourth one is from Kakinada to Puducherry, that is towards the east coast. And the fifth one is canal integrated with the Brahmani and Mahanadi river delta system. So, these are the five existing waterways and government through National Waterways Bill 2015 added 106. Now, let us hope government will give more impetus for water transport as 106 new waterways are added to national waterways. Look into the next one, Parliament passes Bureau of Indian Standards Bill. All of you are well aware about the Bureau of Indian Standards, that is the national standards body. So far, informally it is national standards body and now it has got statutory provision with the passage of bill. So, it includes services, goods, various uh, processes. Basically, the aim of it is uh, to ensure high quality products and services in the country. Informally, it is in existence. Now, it is made formal. So, statutory framework was uh, devised for this Bureau of Indian Standards and it provides for recall of ISI marked products if it is not uh, satisfying relevant standards and it prevents misuse of standard marks and also it introduces mandatory hallmarking for precious metals. So, with this standard certification for products and services concerning health, safety and environment have also been made mandatory. So, the products concerning health, safety and environment mandatorily should have this BIS standards. And another important aspect is, if the goods and services do not conform to the standards, compensation is to be paid to the consumers. Right friends, look at the issues across the states.
మహారాష్ట్ర తెలంగాణ సాయిన్ హిస్టారిక్ ఎకార్డ్ ఆన్ రివర్ వాటర్స్ ప్లస్ టూ స్టేట్స్ సాయిన్ మెమొరాండమ్ ఆఫ్ అండర్స్టాండింగ్ ఆన్ కాన్స్టిట్యూషన్ ఆఫ్ ఇంటర్ స్టేట్ వాటర్ బోర్డ్ ది తెలంగాణ చీఫ్ మినిస్టర్ కె చంద్రశేఖర్ రావు అండ్ ద చీఫ్ మినిస్టర్ ఆఫ్ మహారాష్ట్ర దేవేంద్ర ఫడ్నవీస్ బోత్ మెట్ ఇన్ ముంబై అండ్ డిసైడెడ్ టు ఎస్టాబ్లిష్ ఇంటర్ స్టేట్ బోర్డ్ and this interstate board will be headed by two chief ministers alternatively each year and the board is expected to sort out issues with regard to tumidi hatti and medi gadda barrages which are into controversies for several years and it is the step in the right direction because of the establishment of uh, this interstate uh, water boards then several issues can be sorted out right and all of you are familiar with uh, the frequent disputes and animosities between various states now at present this settlers emuna link canal dispute is going on and haryana and punjab are at loggerheads then the issue with regard to mullaperiyar dam between tamil nadu and kerala kaveri water dispute arises quite often between tamil nadu and karnataka and if you look at such type of cases this type of arrangement for forming interstate water board is the step in the right direction look into the next one marshall islands that is the suing india pakistan and united kingdom this marshall islands dragged india pakistan and the united kingdom to international court of justice and it decided to file case against nine countries but international court of justice decided to take up the case against three countries only because these three countries recognize its authority right so now this marshall islands where is this marshall islands the marshall islands is a presidential republic in central pacific it is near international date line and it is one of the islands of the micronesia region and this is independent country but it has got a free association with usa what is meant by free association the meaning of free association is united states of america will support this country but the defense matters will be looked after by united states of america and capital is majuro and the currency is united states dollar and the country suffered because of nuclear tests conducted by united states of america in 1940s and 1950s In 1940s and 1950s United States of America conducted several nuclear tests in these Marshall Islands but surprisingly the country has got a good relation with United States of America and it is in free association with United States of America the country which conducted nuclear tests in 1940s 50s is in good relation with the Marshall Islands but Marshall Islands ironically decided to sue India Pakistan and United Kingdom for not able to stop the nuclear proliferation in this world and now international court of justice which is the based in the Hague will take up the case against India Pakistan and the United Kingdom right see the irony United States of America destroyed the islands with uh, the nuclear tests in 1940s 50s now united states of america is looking after the defense of marshall islands with the free association agreement and now marshall islands instead of blaming united states of america is blaming india pakistan and united kingdom so this is the irony of the situation right friends look at the next issue that is economy and banking economic stimulus by european central bank european central bank is doing whatever is possible as far as monetary policy is concerned it is looking at free money from all the available means but the growth is not taking off 
European Central Bank is using all the possible methods. It is reducing interest rates. It introduced a negative interest rate and it is going for massive quantitative easing. But still growth is not taking place in Eurozone countries. That is the irony at present in the world. Now recently, European Central Bank cut its main refinancing rate from 0.05% to 0%. If it is a refinancing banks, then the interest rate is 0%. Second is deposit rates cut to minus 0.4%. Minus 0.4%. That means when the banks are parking extra money with European Central Bank, in return the banks are required to pay that is a negative interest rate. Third important point is overnight lending rates are also reduced from 0.3% to 0.25%. This overnight lending rate is equivalent to our repo rate. And whatever I have told under 0.2 that is negative interest rate that is equivalent to our reverse repo rate. And look at the fourth point, quantitative easing increased from 60 billion euro to 80 billion euro. Every month, European Central Bank is purchasing bonds worth 60 billion euro till date, but from now onwards, it will purchase 80 billion euro. Right? So, it is making all out efforts to ensure growth in Eurozone region, but Eurozone is not taking off on the expected lines. Right? Looking to the miscellaneous issues, ISRO places IRNSS 1F into orbit and Six satellites are put into orbit. The seventh satellite is expected shortly. With these seven satellites, India will have its own positioning system. So, accurate position information system will become reality in few months. And at present, we use a foreign navigation system. Once the seventh satellite is put into orbit, then what will happen? We will have our own navigation system, not only the entire Indian country, but 1500 kilometers from its boundary will also be covered. And this IRNSS 1F has got a lift off mass of 1425 kg and a life of 12 years. And if you look at the GPS, GPS belongs to United States of America. Then GLONASS, GLONASS is the positioning system of Russia. Galileo is the positioning system of Europe. All of you are familiar with Baidu. Baidu is the global positioning system of China. Similarly, once a seventh is put into orbit, India will have its own positioning system. Let us hope it to happen within few months. Look at the last issue, International Women's Day. International Women's Day was celebrated on 8th March and Theme for 2016 is Planet 5050 by 2030, step it up for gender equality. And it is holiday in several countries. For the first time on 28th February 1909, it was observed by Socialist Party of America in remembrance of 1908 strike of International Ladies Garments Workers Union. And the major event on 8th March took place in 1914 when right to vote for women, the demand was taken up in Germany. So, in Germany, 8th March was observed with the demand for right to vote for women and in the year 1977, United Nations General Assembly invited member states to proclaim March 8 as the United Nations Day for women's rights and world peace. And the theme for 2016 is Planet 5050 by 2030, step it up for gender equality. And if you look at relevant issues, ILO report, ILO is International Labour Organization, Geneva based organization. In its report, Women at Work Trends 2016, it says gender gap in employment, wages and social protection have changed a little in 20 years. There is not much change for the past 20 years. 
and another important point is the president of the country presented the nari shakti awards to 15 women and to some organizations for their contribution to women empowerment organizations have got cash award of rupees 2 lakh and individuals have got cash prize of rupees 1 lakh and the other important point is with regard to women's reservation bill in the legislatures this bill was passed in Rajya Sabha in 2010 but it has not seen the light of the day in Lok Sabha till date right and if you look at the issues concerning India, the representation in parliament and the state legislatures varies somewhere around 10%. And if you look at women's reservation bill of providing 33% of seats for women in state legislatures and parliament, for the first time it was presented in parliament in 1996 through 81st amendment bill. Finally, Rajya Sabha passed the bill in 2010. It took 14 years for Rajya Sabha to pass the bill and it is yet to see the light of the day in Lok Sabha. There is no consensus among the parties with regard to women's reservation and I do not think that it is going to be passed during the next few years also. Third important point is female participation in the labor market is 28.6 percent only of working age population. Working age population is between 15 to 64 years and for men the working age population is around 80 percent whereas for women the working age population participation in the labor market is just 29 percent and if you look at China the female participation is 64 percent. The next important point is women's ownership of land and property is less than 4 percent and Indian women contribute to just 20 percent of GDP. The contribution of women to GDP is just 20 percent, balance 80 percent is contributed by men. And if you look at the global average, 37 percent of GDP is contributed by women. And if you look at China, it is 41 percent. So, these are the issues, gender specific issues which are plaguing the country and if you look at other socio-economic indicators like health and education, this women are still lagging behind. And finally, if you look at the status visibility point of view, because certain reservations are given in panchayat bodies and their participation increased, visibility point of view, there is a some improvement. But empowerment point of view, there is a lot more needs to be done. So, empowering the woman is the need of the hour and that is the final word. Let us hope our parliament to pass the women's reservation bill so as to empower women, not only that, so as to make or so as to realize the theme of this year's International Women's Day that is planet 5050 by 2030 step it up for gender equality so as to realize it women's reservation bill and further empowerment of women is the need of the hour let us hope our parliament will take the desired steps in the near future right friends with this let us uh, conclude this week's uh, Lecture part, please do join for news analysis. We deliberated on monetary expansion. Right, friends, thank you.